Hey guys, in this quick video, I wanna to talk to you about how ashwagandha may help with hypogonadism and low progesterone and testosterone levels. So for those of you that may not know, hypogonadism literally refers to the suboptimal functioning of the gonads. So as I typically point out, the root word hypo refers to slow or low, and gonad is another word for testes or testicles. So in the case of hypogonadism, you have testicles that are not functioning at their optimal rate, resulting in a decreased or suboptimal production of various sex steroids. So the testicles like the ovaries to women are a major source for producing various sex steroids, things like luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, progesterone, testosterone, and other androgen hormones that are responsible for a robust rate of metabolism, energy, and they are of course highly responsible for various aspects of sexual function. So hypogonadism in this way can not only lead to hormonal imbalances, specifically deficient levels of progesterone and testosterone, but this can result in or contribute to a slow metabolism and all sorts of sexual dysfunction. So considering that we have a large male audience and we're always talking about how to optimize male health, masculinity, sexual function, and specifically boost the androgenic hormones that are responsible for good health for both men and women, I figured that making a video on the topic of hypogonadism would be worth doing. So there are two major types of hypogonadism. There is what is referred to as primary hypogonadism and secondary hypogonadism. So keep in mind that the endocrine system is all interrelated. So that means there are many cases where different glands are not functioning because of another dysfunction somewhere in the endocrine system. So that's what's referring to as secondary hypogonadism. Primary hypogonadism means that there's something specifically going wrong with the testes. And there are many causes of primary hypogonadism. Some of the more common ones are going to be a direct injury to the testicles. This could also be things like radiation exposure from x-rays or, or chemotherapy causing a direct sort of mutation or oxidative damage or stress to the testicles themselves. There can always be some sort of infection that might occur in the testicles. It could be due to things like hemochromatosis, which is a fancy term for the accumulation of iron in the blood, which can cause the testicles to function abnormally. As I talk about in one of my videos on my personal channel, excess iron is a major problem for men in particular. It can cause a whole host of oxidative stress-related issues, so that could be a major contributing factor for men. But in the case of hypogonadism, excess iron in the blood can cause the testes to function abnormally and not produce enough sex steroids. Then, of course, there's other factors like hitting puberty late, so the testicles not descending at a proper rate, and a whole host of other different causative factors contributing to the primary hypogonadism. So those are all common factors and we'll get into some things how to correct those in other videos later on. But looking at secondary hypogonadism, this is I think a bit more common of a cause, which again refers to a abnormality or a dysfunction somewhere else in the endocrine system. So like other aspects of the endocrine system, there's a strong correlation between the gonads in the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands, as well as the adrenals. So if there's stress somewhere along the lines of the endocrine system in these particular glands, this can cause an abnormality in the function of the gonads. So this is another way of saying that the rest of your body is in direct communication with your gonads, particularly your brain. And one of the major things that contributes to the primary hypogonadism is stress. If you become stressed out, what tends to happen is the pituitary sends a signal to the adrenal glands to secrete cortisol and stress substances, which directly downregulate typically the functioning of the thyroid and the gonads. So that's one of the major common contributing factors to it. And there's of course tons of things that can initiate a stress response in this way, basically causing a abnormality in the HPA axis or the HPG hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis. Now getting to the meat of this video, I wanna to talk to you about how ashwagandha has been clinically proven to help with what is more so secondary hypogonadism, which again usually refers to a dysfunction or a break in communication between the HPG axis. So as I said, there's many different causative factors or contributing factors to hypogonadism. But in this particular study right here, which was done on mice who were sexually addicted mice, 
they used opioids like morphine to induce hypogonadism, leading to hormonal imbalances that can negatively affect brain chemistry and all sorts of neurochemicals and hormones in the body that could contribute to sexual addiction. But specifically what they found was that opioids can induce hypogonadism by directly interfering with the functioning of the testes, resulting in low serum testosterone levels, low progesterone levels, and can even directly negatively affect the HPA axis, affecting luteinizing hormone, which would further contribute to low testosterone production. So opioids are a good example of a cause for both primary and secondary hypogonadism. So they directly negatively affect the testicles in their functioning, but they also negatively affect the HPA axis. So the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the adrenal glands, and through a very broad range effect, decrease the functioning of the testes. So analyzing the study a bit further, opioid-induced sexually addicted mice or rats were fed tablets or pellets that had about 10 milligrams of ashwagandha extract in them. And what they found between the two groups was that the progesterone levels in the ashwagandha treated group significantly increased up to 66.28 picomoles per milliliter. They also found that ashwagandha prevented or inhibited a decrease of testosterone through opioid fed mice, so sexually addicted mice through the use of opioids like morphine. So in conclusion, we know that opioids can induce hypogonadism through two mechanisms. It can inhibit the functioning of the HPA axis, decreasing luteinizing hormone, which is a precursor to the production of things like testosterone. It can also directly interfere with the HPG or the hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis, directly causing a decrease in serum testosterone levels. So both of these things are going to contribute to hypogonadism, both secondary and primary hypogonadism. But we also know that ashwagandha supplementation, even in the face of opioid addiction, can increase the function of the gonads and the production of gonadotropin sex steroids or hormones like progesterone and testosterone, as well as luteinizing hormone. So as we talk about in a lot of the videos here on the channel, low progesterone levels is a major cause for accelerated aging, decreased adaptation and resistance to stress, and ultimately disease. Not only is progesterone a precursor to testosterone, it is the basic anti-stress hormone, meaning that when it's deficient, there's an increased reliance on cortisol, the catabolistic stress hormone. So more often than not, if you're dealing with low testosterone levels, even as a male, you're likely dealing with low progesterone levels. And one major contributing factor to this could be hypogonadism through a couple of different mechanisms, of course. But if you're somebody who suspects either low progesterone or testosterone, or perhaps you know, then one simple place to start would be to experiment with using ashwagandha. Now, also keep in mind that this study brings to our attention that if you're on any sort of painkillers, any sort of opioid-like medications, or even over-the-counters, that those could be directly contributing to hypogonadism. This also gives us a clue to the fact that any sort of stress or toxin or inflammation could potentially be contributing to hypogonadism. So in addition to coming off of any opioid-like medications and finding natural alternatives to those, which we have videos on, I would highly recommend, in addition to supplementing with ashwagandha, that you find ways to lower your total stress. Remember, good sexual health is one of the key fundamental biomarkers of good overall health. So if you're having problems in this area, it is not an isolated area. It is a direct reflection of your overall health. However, that does bring this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And of course, if you're interested in learning more about ashwagandha or supplementing with it, you can find that on our online tonic herb shop in the description box below. Also, for anybody else watching this who's interested in optimizing their overall metabolic health, improving their sexual function, their sexual health, we do have a course that could help you out. We actually have a couple courses that could help you out. Our healthy weight loss course, although targeted to weight loss, is actually a really wonderful source of information for optimizing your whole metabolic system. So weight loss is typically just a symptom or a positive effect of a good metabolic system. And one of the major things that's going to be significantly improved in optimizing the metabolism is of course your sexual drive, your sexual function, and your fertility levels. So if you're somebody who's been trying to find ways to fix these sorts of issues, be sure to check that course out as an additional resource and you might find it incredibly useful in that way as well. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching guys and we'll see you next time.